Hi, this is Rochelle Scrapcraftastic, and I am back to spruce up this Dollar Tree planner, personalize it, customize it, and make it my own. So, so far we haven't done a whole lot. We made, this was the first of me using um, stickers to do other things with. So I used some of the full box stickers, my old stickers from the Happy Planner to make this cover. It's a single side laminated cover and it still needs a little work, but I decided to wait to see what I do on the inside here and here before I do any more trimming. But this is what we did in the last video. And I kind of just stuck this clip that I had because I thought it went well with the look of this traveler's notebook. Okay, so what I'm going to attempt to do is something that I just kind of thought about, you know, in that little time right before you fall asleep or right when you wake up. It's when I think about things and have ideas. So I was thinking about the video where I showed different ways to make envelopes and I had one envelope that was long and it could be folded in half and have two envelopes on either side of a notebook or whatever you choose. I was thinking about junk journals at the time, but now I'm thinking I can do the same thing for my traveler's notebook. So I pulled out my envelope punch board from We Are Memory Keepers just to see what the sizes are. I probably could come up with this on my own, but if it's already easy for me why not use it so I have this here I'm gonna use it so I decided to do a six inch in height envelope by eight and a half inches wide they do have six by eight which that's what these notebooks would be approximately if they're open like this they would be six inches in height eight inches in width but I wanted to add that extra half an inch so that they can hang over just a little bit I think I don't know that might be a little too much overhang for this notebook but I'm gonna try it and if I don't like it I can always get another piece of paper and do it again okay so according to the envelope punch board I need 11 and a half by 11 and a half this is 12 by 12 paper so I need to trim it down to 11 and a half. So there's that. Can use that to make a paper bead with. And then there is, oops, out of frame, sorry. And then there's that. Okay. So this should be 11 and a half by 11 and a half if I cut it properly. Then it says, oh, this is gonna be bigger though. I forgot that. Maybe I should do 11 by 11. Cause remember what I mentioned before, if the card size is six by eight and a half, the envelope is gonna be a little bit bigger. So let's do some more trimming. I hope I don't regret this. But we're gonna trim off another half an inch. We're gonna do the one that says six by eight. And so my paper needs to, ooh, sorry. My paper needs to be 11 by 11. I don't even know which side I just cut. So let's try this again. <laughs> have a couple of paper beads out of the scraps or something I'll make something with them that's why it trips me out that people think that I just waste washi tape I know I'm stuck on the washi tape y'all sick of hearing about it but yeah it trips me out that people think I just waste washi tape when I keep even the tiniest scrap of paper to use for something else really okay 11 by 11 and then I need to score at four and seven eighths for my first score line so that's the one right before you get to the five 
Let's take this out so I can have it ready to go. Make sure I get on the line. Okay. So we're gonna try and find the place to score and punch. This has already got me nervous. It doesn't look big enough. And trying to line up that score line uh, with the little nub right there. Score and punch. Line it up. Now when you do the other side, opposite of the one you just punched, like opposite, it should line up with where the measurement is on the board. So my initial score was four and seven eighths. When I come on the opposite side of the paper, if this is lined up properly, you'll see that it's the same four and seven eighths there. In my experience, you can always kind of tell if you're on the right track, if that happens. So that's another way to make sure you're, you're lining up things properly. It's easy to get off track with the envelope punch board if you're not quite precise. So let's line that little nub up with that score line. And I'm going to, did I punch? Oh, I didn't punch. I gotta go back, see? Gotta pay attention. Punch when you're supposed to punch. Score when you're supposed to score. So I need to line that back up with that score line. It should fall on four and seven eighths. Okay, punch, okay. So this is what we're working with. This does not look big enough, but it probably is. Let's get the scraps out of the way. And unfortunately, the majority of my paper is not double-sided, so we are gonna have a white inside unless I cover it. And if I was doing something junk journalish, I would cover it. But because we are doing planner stuff, I probably won't. Because with a junk journal, I could cover it with a thin paper. I could cover it with book paper. But the only thing I could cover this with would be more cardstock, and that would be entirely too thick. So here we go rounding the corners of our envelope after folding all the flaps and this is what it looks like as a regular envelope how and ever we want it to be like this let's see so i want that up top and then this will fold to close on one side and this will fold to close on the other side which means I need to fold this in half. So I'm gonna put it on here. Or could I put it on my scoreboard and score it and fold it? Let's see. Seriously? So it gave us more height, but it didn't give us more width. I need it more width. <laughs> okay. So what do we do? We're gonna make two, cause I'm gonna make another one. Okay, but for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and score it. Okay. So yeah, fiddlesticks. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna score in the middle on a four. because this is eight inches wide. Get a good score, cause a lot of cardstock to go through. And, why does it give you so much extra height and not more width? I wonder. Okay, let's get my new bone folder and burnish that down let's 
<laughs> okay. So again, I want this to be going up. So all I would do, and you really don't have to do this, is add a little adhesive here in the center to hold that closed. And you got two envelopes. You can also put a little, um, what do you call it? Velcro dot there, but I don't know if that would work because you don't want to put the Velcro too close to the edge. So it might be better just to leave it as is. Um, let's run a little teeny bit of tape there just to hold that closed. So I'm just gonna run a little bit on either side. Like that to hold it in place. Okay. So let's put it in here just to get a good idea of what it would look like. It's too tall to me, it's too tall. But let's pop it on here. Oh yeah, that's way too tall. Jeez. Too tall and not wide enough. So let's see how we can fix that. I'm not gonna be able to use this in here but I can use it in a junk journal, so no loss. It will get used. Let's try it again. So what that did, before we try again, it added a whole half inch to the top. So yeah, it made it six and a half by eight. So we do need it to be eight and a half, but we don't need it to be six and a half in height. So instead of six by eight, we'll do five and a half by eight and a half. Let's try that. Cause then that'll give me a, an eighth, uh, a half an inch more in width and not so much more in height. And believe it or not, we would use the same size paper, 11 by 11. So five and a half by eight and a half, 11 by 11, and our score would be at four and a half. Very minimal difference. So this stripe paper came from Feeling Naughty. This is an old hot buy paper pad. Uh, what's the copyright? From 2017 is the copyright. And I'm thinking I might use the blue because I don't want it to have like a nautical feel, even though I like quite a few of these papers. I could use one of those or this. Let's use this. You know, I kind of want to save that for my mermaid journal. Let's not. <laughs> I'm gonna use the blue stripes. Where are they? There they are. Let's try this again. So, let's move these out of the way. Back at 11 by 11. Okay, so we will punch at four and a half this time. And score, let's try and remember to punch and score on all sides. Okay. 
Remember the last time also I talked about how this notch would line up with this score line on the last side. That'll also kind of help keep you on track. All right. So here we go with our 11 by 11 piece. Same size as the other one. Let's go ahead and round the corner. But this one is scored differently. And let's hope that it works. So it's shorter and wider, so it should work. See the difference? Shorter and wider. Okay. So just in case you missed it, I used the option for five and a half by eight and a half card size. So if this is eight and a half, then I would score at four and a quarter to get the center. Let's score on this side. We'll get a cleaner score. Four and a quarter. Please don't jump the track. I think it did jump the track. Okay. Did I jump the track? I don't know. Hard to tell. So let's try and fold this. And get it lined up before I start burnishing. Now you could probably do this with a thinner paper. But I chose cardstock because I want it to hold up. Because we won't be laminating it or anything like that. It's a little short on the fold. Okay, so which way do I want it to go? It, it really doesn't matter, but I kind of like the way it looks going that way. So let's see. Well, that doesn't really match either. And it fits kind of cool. Okay, so that fits great. It needs to loosen up. I could probably score a little more on either side, but you have an envelope on this side to tuck things in. And maybe I could glue that down a little bit better. Oh, it's stuck now. So you got a tuck spot here, a little pocket, put your stickers in there. And like I said, you could put a Velcro dot or something else here as a closure or just use a clip on the side, some type of clip. Let's see, don't I have some decorative clips that don't stick out? I think I do. I'll see what I can find. But yeah, so you have a pocket here. And then 
you have a pocket here. Now, if you don't want to make your own, I do have an A6 double envelope template on my website at scrapcraftastic.com where you can just use your digital die cutting machine. The envelope is a little different from this, but the end result is that you have a envelope on each side. So that is it. I think I'm going to make the other style envelope for you too, so that you can do that as well. That'll be in our next video. We'll do the other envelope style. So that's it. We learned our lesson. <laughs> um, this one was too small. No problem. No biggie. I can use it for something else. And then we made the blue one that fits just right. So that's it for this video. This is another way you can use your envelope punch board, at least for smaller planners. You can use it to make double envelopes for your smaller traveler's notebooks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Also make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that little gray bell so that you'll receive notification each time I upload a new video. Be sure to check the community tab and my stories for updates throughout the week. Also check us out over at patreon.com slash scrapcraftastic for exclusive content and digital downloads. I am reviving Journal Life's journey or at least it, attempting to. So also check that out. You can find me across social media at scrapcraft Fantastic. Visit my website and shop at scrapcraftastic.com. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.